Welcome to Padding Pediatrician. We're talking about jugular venous pressure. By definition, this is the vertical distance from the midpoint of the right atrium to the pulsation of the internal jugular vein. Um, it's normally 6 to 8 centimeters of water, or if you are measuring above the, from the angle of low E, it's 3 to 4 centimeters. Um, it's used to estimate the center of venous pressure in the pressure in the right artery. So how it's measured, you can use a central venous catheter to measure the JVP, or you can measure on clinical examination, uh, push the patient at 45 degrees and uh, look for the pulsation of the internal jugular vein, then measure the vertical elevation of the internal jugular vein above the angle of low way. Then whatever value you get, if you get 3 centimeters, you add 5 centimeters to get the actual value of the internal jugular vein above the at right atrium. So the internal angle of flow is known to be 5 centimeters above the sternal, above the right atrium. Um, if we are comparing uh, the JVP to the um, carotid pulse to just differentiate it, the jugular venous pulsations, the inward movements, whereas the carotid pulsations are outward movements, and the jugular venous pulsation is biphasic which means you, it moves in, inwards twice and you'll be able to see what corresponds to the X and Y descent while the secreted pulse is monophasic. The JVP raises with abdominal jugular uh, um, chest while the secreted pulse is affected and the JVP changes with respiration. Um, it also changes with position and it can be diminished by applying pressure at the root of the neck. The JVP is not palpable. Okay, so we're just going to look at the components of the jugular venous uh, pulsation. If we are using a catheter, a catheter in the internal jugular vein, we will be able to see three ascents which correspond, which are known as the A, C, and V. A corresponds to atrial contraction, C corresponds to right ventricular contraction, and V. Um, we, we should flex the right atrium maximum pressure before the tricuspid valve opens. Remember that in diastole, there are four stages. The first stage is isovolumic relaxation, followed by rapid filling of then there is diastasis and this um, contraction of the atrium. So what happens at V is that uh, during the um, isovolumic relaxation, uh, the right atrium fills with blood and um, after the, the after the, the, the right um, atrium is filled with blood before the tricuspid valve um, opens that's when you you get the, the V So the jugular venous pulsation has got three descents. The X, which indicates the relaxation of the atrium and the closure of the tricuspid valves. And the X, then a which indicates the drop in pressure after contraction of the right ventricle. And the Y, which represents the fall in pressure during rapid ventricular filling. So here I just tried to make a sketch of the JVP trace. Um, here, it starts at S1 which is um, the first ultrasound and uh, S2 which is the second ultrasound the space between S1 up to S2 um, this is systo and from S2 to S1 this is diastole Note that's the difference in size between S1 and S2 the duration is shorter while S2 to S1 the duration is longer this is because uh, systo is shorter than diastole then it's um, S1 uh, this corresponds to the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve. So in this case, we are concerned about the tricuspid valve. So at S1, this is where the tricuspid valve closes. Um, and C, it corresponds to the right ventricular contraction. Then after the right ventricle contracts, we see the descent, uh, which, it, which is known as the XY, with an apostrophe. Um, and then after that, the... Uh, uh, filling it starts again and the, the 
V corresponds to the pressure um, that is in the atrium just before the tracker speed valves uh, opens. And A, here it corresponds to the atrial contraction. So this Y descend is the dropping pressure as the tracker speed valve opens. And uh, the X, which occurs after A, is the, is the dropping pressure after the atrial contract. So we we'll talk about causes of raised jugular venous pressure. Uh, anything that increases right ventricular pressure and reduces uh, compliance, compliance, like pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular failure, pulmonary stenosis, and right ventricular infarction. And those causes which cause right ventricular inflow impedance, like tracker switch stenosis, right atrial myxoma, and constrictive pericarditis. Extra uh, cardiac causes. You can use the pneumonic fat P, F for fluid overload, A for anemia, T for thyrotoxicosis, P for pregnancy, E for exercise, and A for AV fistula. Um, the abnormalities of the jugular venous pulsations will A wave can disappear in, in situation where um, the atria is not contracting, like in atrial fibrillation, and A wave can become prominent. Um, in, in cases where the right ventricle is resisting the flow of blood from the right atrium, like if there is right ventricular hypertrophy, maybe from uh, pulmonary hypertension, and in cases of restrictive cardiomyopathy, and also in cases of uh, tracker speed stenosis. Canon A waves, these are very tall A waves, and uh, these are seen when the right atrium is contracting against a closed tracker speed valves. And this is seen in where there is atrial ventricular dissociation, e.g., completed block and ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so prominent V waves um, occurs when contraction, ventricular contraction synchronizes with V. Remember, V is the maximum pressure of the atrium uh, before the tracker speed valve opens. And this can occur in tracker speed regurgitation. Like the C and V waves okay at the same time, and they build together to form uh, a prominent. Slow white descent to get the tracker speed stenosis and actual maximum.